starts to assert their dominance over Fav Gaming here. A true David and Goliath match. I wish I could speak or read Japanese because I would love to know what the teams were saying to each other in the chat. But nonetheless, it is time to get stuck into it. Map number one, Border. And everything is beset before Scars to make this a dominant start to the series. Yeah, look, this is, a, this is an exciting one. We're going to go to Border as the first map, and Border can be quite a challenging map to defend, right? If you're Scars. But also, they are Scars, right? So I'm expecting them to bring along some exciting stuff against Fab and really prevent them from getting in the building in that early round. And uh, I'm really interested to see what they can bring, especially as these bans go out at the moment, right? You've got the Ying going out. That's actually Scars banning that out. So leaning into the fact that Fav might be looking for more of those explosive executes as we see time and time again from Japan. Dokumi being banned out as well is going to allow Scars on the defense to play a little bit more external to the bomb site and not be cleared out as quickly with that Dokumi being taken away. Also interesting to see this Azami banned out. Very powerful on water. Allows you to play a lot of positions that usually you wouldn't be able to. I think about East Stairs or CCTV. They can really become power positions for the defense so i think that's a good ban from fab but of course as we always talk about mandy it's uh, about picking the lesser evil or the greater evil when it comes to banning out defensive operators the valkyrie's army might be gone but solace is in the mirror is in uh the warden the fenrir oh, so God. many insane operators on this defense that scars will also have and while this can be in some fashions an attacker favored map uh, I just Defender I think that Scar starting on defense here is uh, the worst nightmare for Fav, which is ironic because Fav actually got to choose which side to start. They seem to think that attack is where they'll have more luck. Yep, apparently so. It does surprise me that they actually went to attack. Like I, I know that Border in history has been a little more attacker sided. Generally, I feel like I'm really generalizing there. I don't think it is, to be honest. But in my mind, the architecture of it leans itself a little bit more into the attack. But like you're saying, at the moment, it really is the defender's game. And just as you're listing off all of those critical operators, they started to get picked out by Scars, as you were saying it, right? We've got Fenrir on the board, we've got Solace, and we've got Warden, which Piana's picked as well. So there's a lot going on here for Scars that Fab are going to have to clear on their attack. Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. I wonder what the idea is with the Brava, though. Not an operator that we often see. Here is brought it. You get some default cameras. Perhaps hack the Fenrir's F nuts. Uh, I was going to say that. that. That's exactly what I think that uh, Yura is going to do with it. You have to deal with the dread mines in some way, right? You need to do, you need to deal with them pretty early because by the time that you hit the bomb site, you want to be able to enable that execute to come through without it being stunted by the dread mines. Not just that, but Yura could also use it potentially to help his entries go in as well. Like if you've got any dread mines that are like on top east or in break or like something like that, that's where you want them to be. Funnily enough, it actually looks like Fav are really focusing on the ground floor to kick things off. This is an Armory Locker's bombsite defense, but a lot of pressure is going down below. Perhaps to take some map control. We do have one set of nades, and we have the buck as well. Gauge vertical play. I even noticed that the player in office has actually reinforced his hatch. Here's a good run out, but Yura lands the shot. That's a good start there for Fav and the opening pick that they needed. Yeah, good job. Uh remaining that composure to land the critical gunfight that they need to get control of that hallway. Of course, the thing that yura has got to worry about is that half the wall is open inside of Armory, so he can't really progress any further uh, past that window that goes into CCTV. Now using those flashbangs to gain 90 control is what Fav are going for as they have full control here inside of CC. Pion is just on the other side of this angle that Yura is fighting at the moment to try and deal with that control they have in CCTV now. That's good map control. You need CCTV to start putting pressure on an armory execute. But uh, there's also a 90 rotate and a fountain rotate. So Rec is going to be keenly watching that. That have actually had a good start here, to their credit, Andy. But uh, how are they going to go when it comes to this phase two, like preparing for an execute, especially because Washoi is downstairs. And he's just near corners away from... That's uh, Buck downstairs of Acerola. 
Scars definitely know what's going on here. They, they are very aware that it's going to be an armory execute. So it's going to be about how they respond to it. Like you said, if they want to go for an execute, they're going to have to be careful for Shoei downstairs because he can deny that plant with the impacts. Really nice pick there from Wreck onto the player inside of CC through that 90 hole. It's going to really enable Scars to get active on the defense. Ooh, and they do. You can see Pion here retaking half wall. And Washoi is also finally taking an Acerola below. Here's a good nade though for Afro. Regaining the numbers advantage for Fav Gaming, but Washoi does not lose those fights. Taken down Candy, he's given a massive opportunity to Scars, but Tayo is the last one remaining. Oh, the team kill! Light just shot his own teammate! That's so unfortunate now, Light must clutch up, and he is not given the chance. Tayo, the one HP clutch to save it for Scars. And Fav, oh, that is such a devastating way to lose that opening round. Yeah, that, that's really unfortunate for Fab. They amounted such a great uh, attack onto that um, top floor, especially gaining that CCTV control. Like you said, they took the steps that they needed to try and get an attack onto Armory. Not just that, but even as the execute came through, they naded out the player behind the half wall. They sent someone down below even to try and deal with Washoi, who was going to deny the plant. But then that pivotal team kill, that team down came through Defender, and it enabled the Fenrir to get the 2k to close it out there. So like you said, it was a bit of a devastating loss that they have. They did all the right things through the early to mid round, but couldn't close it out in the execute. It's funny, there's, uh, I feel like there's a team in every region that's infamous for a bad reason. And unfortunately, Fav are quite known for their team kills. It's in the midst of the chaos, sometimes mistakes can be made. And sadly, really was uh, quite a punishment for them, like getting that team kill, potentially lost the round, right? Like 2v1, they really should have won that. Oh well, I digress. Of course, Fav will have plenty more opportunities to attack here. Scars rotate down, and like you said, to Fav's credit, that was a pretty good start and a pretty good attempt at an attack. Let's see how they go when they need to take a little bit more map control on one of these ground floor bomb sites. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, like, I think uh, Fav going into border, they, they kind of have the right ideas going here, right? I think that they chose attack, we were curious about it, but they seem to move to us so far that they know what's going on. They, they know the right things to do on this map to clear what they can. I think it's just about being a little more careful about it from here on out against Scars. So first they're going to start out on this top floor clear. Even though the bomb site is down inside of Bathroom and Tellers, they're going to be vulnerable to that vertical gameplay, right? So they first want to clear out anyone on the top floor before they translate their push down. Like this roam here from Washoi, he's got this aggressive line of sight and he's got the support from Fishlike as well, who has his door open. Fishlike did see a player cross, knows that they're getting aggressive on the balcony now. This is quite an awkward push for Fav, they have to deal with two quite separated players who can play off of each other. What's the idea here for Fav? I haven't quite figured it out yet. I think they're trying to jump into CCTV and top east here. It looks like they're just going to sweep their way across the southern side of the map. The way they're clearing has actually forced Fish like to fall back into Armory because it's, there's a potential of a nade being thrown in through the window. Not only that, but the entry is coming through from break and there's no one to support him from mezzanine either, right? So that's going to be the attacker's control. He's decided he's wasted enough time is going to fall off instead. Yeah, he really has wasted enough time. Have a look at that clock. Half the round is done. And uh, Scars are just continuing to consolidate. Falling back now. Remember, this is actually a workshop defense, not a teller's defense, as is more commonly seen. Now, the second opening pick in a row, or the attacking side of Fav Gaming. Oh, what a pre fire from Fishlike. That could not have been more perfect. The refrag is indeed traded. Interest now for Fav as they're starting to run out of time. With a minute left to go, the only vertical gameplay they have is the two breaching charge sets of Candy and of Light. So they really need to start to get a wriggle on inside of Armory if they want to put that pressure down into the site. But look at what Scars have done, right? Even though there is vertical pressure for Fav, they've actually moved to all the places that are adjacent to the bomb site. So even when that vertical does come down, they're not going to feel that pressure. Yeah, this is classic, isn't it? This is the retake strategy that happens when you know that time is of the essence, and at the moment that is what is Fav's worst enemy. However, they are diligent, checking the site, Tayo goes down. Numbers advantage now for Fav, but we have seen this fumble before. Two more kills, and this could be exactly what they have been waiting for. The 7-0 is certainly not going to happen if Fav can convert this round. It will need to be a 1v4, but that is not going to happen. Candy to close.
half of their first round on the board, Mandy. We're only two rounds in. Perhaps we underestimated them after all. Yeah, I was going to say, that was a good round from Puff. That, that was a very methodical clear through that top floor. They did the execute that they needed to, to force the players off of that eastern stairs and out of that CCTV position. Not just that, but eventually gaining control and armory from the entry holes that they made on the south side of the map, enable them to get that vertical. And even though the Scars players were so safe from that vertical, when you have that pressure coming down from the top floor, you also want to then send one of your attackers down on the horizontal to go and backstab the players that are trying to get out of the bomb site, right? And that's exactly what Acer Roller did when he was on that Iana. He was down on the ground floor anticipating that Scar's players would be out and in his in his line of sight, and he claimed those lives and eventually won them the round. Yep, Scar's, I guess, it's not really a big issue dwelling on the issue, dwelling on the downfall of their workshop defense they can just move over to tellers which to most teams is the preferred bomb site anyway i wonder what the uh the problem there was really for scars though i think maybe perhaps don't uh, give fav too much respect you know don't fall off your robes so early even though we i did feel like they had a decent amount of time they you know you can always hold on for a bit longer and scars are pretty confident in their their gun fights they're pretty confident in their map control so I wouldn't mind seeing them just hold on a little tighter to this room. I do get what you mean. Like, it, it does feel like Scars at the moment with the way that they're playing are giving a lot of respect to Fav and the way that they're falling off. I would have to agree when I saw that room. I thought, oh, okay, you know, they, they got the value they needed out of that one. They're safe. They're safe from the vertical as well. But but actually, Fav were able to convert that because they were so surrounding of the bomb site. So, yeah, I think just small things in the way of Scars in, in the last few dying seconds of the round, uh, winning out critical gunfights that they need to um, as the execute comes through. I think it can just sort of turn the tide of rounds sometimes. Like, those are, that was one of those rounds that's like it happens you know like you do the right things you respect your opponent but like you know sometimes it happens in your fall off yeah indeed i'd love to see scars find some more success on these aggressive plays these aggressive runouts but fav have been really good at shutting it out you're just, just loose nading that position preventing the aggressive play just like so tempted to go for this run out, but likely being watched and the perfect jump in for Candy. Once again, the opening pick for Fav Gaming that makes three for three. That was a really cool hop in from Candy as well. He used the EMP at the same time as he vaulted through. So as the EMP went off, the vault like sound that goes off was actually covered at the same time. So he makes that timing work really well against Fish Like, who didn't quite land the shots that he needed to take him down. And that's a great opening pick for Fav. I've never quite uh, seen Thatcher used in that fashion, but uh, credit to him, it worked. Now, really for Fab, it's just about making slow but steady progress here. Map control up above the bomb site is next on the chopping block, and Manny, this is not looking good for Scars. Fav have been beautiful here. They're so patient, they're so thorough, and they have now basically cleared this top floor with the exception of Wreck hiding in office. Yeah, that's actually three rounds in a row now that Fav have successfully gotten CCTV control. Like, literally every single round that we've seen them attack, they've had the same formula as to take CCTV, and they're incredibly proficient at it. They've never lost that gunfight. Here comes the East Stairs control, though, for Washoi. Unfortunately, he doesn't land the shots that he needs against Candy, and that's a pretty serious man disadvantage now for Scars. Oh, Pion, you got to win that fight. Wreck actually does find one elsewhere, but that player in bot East Stairs has still survived. Very low HP for Pion as well. Rex in a dangerous position, but Bav Gaming are being thorough once again. Another EMP used to try and sound cue cover. Rex finds one, but he is in a 1v3 spots out. The first player, but is not able to land the shot. Bav Gaming have taken the lead here, and they have been open and shot the better team on border thus far. They're doing an excellent job by clearing through border. It feels like they've got their formula down, like they've got the science of border down, right? Like clear out CCTV. Translate that control through to Easters and through to Armory after that. And then from there, it's just like, it's game on. It feels like for Fav, as soon as they're able to get that, they can translate that really well into round win. Even in the first round, it felt like they did the right things. They did that exact formula and they just lost it to what was an incredible one versus one from a Fenrir player, right? So ultimately, I think at the moment, it's actually Fav in the driver's seat on the attack. I can certainly see why Fav decided to start on the attack first. Even in that first round, right, Mandy, like that was a 2v1 that Fav probably should have won. 
Yeah, exactly. So this yeah. could very easily be a 3-0 lead. Quite concerned for Scars, and so they've taken their tactical timeout. They've had a minute to talk through what to do, and I personally don't really know what it is that they need to do. I have a feeling it kind of like wraps back to the point that you were talking about, about like the respect thing, right? Like the problem with Fav at the moment is that they're constantly or consistently getting the control of the map that they want, right? Like without any contest. And I think as a result, like Scars, they either, they, they need to choose to go one way or the other here, right? They either need to help Fish like in this position inside of CCTV, because that is always over and over again, the first point of entry for Fav, or they need to tell Fish like to like get out because he's constantly being killed in that position, right? So I think, I think it's like one way or the other for Scars and they actually need to help each other out and then come to one conclusion. Well, I'm glad that we've got the mirror. We're seeing some adaptations, some changes. And I'm expecting that this mirror will be placed on the armory wall and look out over that balcony to try and support the player in CCTV. Which is exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. Looks like one mirror is here inside office, but... I mean, I, I do think that on water, you, you have to hold CCTV. Like, you can't get away with not holding yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, think and that not just that. But like, you the go. rework that's come through, you need mezzanine as well, like, with that, right? Like, the, that's the whole point of holding Easters, is that that CCTV player is, like, kind of in the danger zone once, like, there's an attacker inside of break room, right? So, yeah, I completely agree with you. Well, I think the combo of um, the Azami ban and Scars not adapting quickly with the replacement with that mirror is what was really harming those first few defensive yeah. rounds. But now we will see if there, the mirror is an adequate replacement for the Azami. It doesn't exactly play the exact same position, but you can achieve a similar outcome. What are Fav's going to do about it? It's not just that as well, but it makes me wonder if Wreck is actually going to dedicate any of those dread... Okay, yeah, there we go. So there is a dread mine here inside of Break, so Fishlake doesn't really have to worry about this walk-in through the door. Not only that, but Wreck himself is also going to be there. So it seems like Scars in their tactical timeout are actually going to double down on the CCTV hold because they realize that this is the point of weakness that's, that that Fav keep getting. Quiet moment now for Fav. The vertical game paired here, some information traded. It's like fish like still cautious about this break entry. Not sure how much information Tayu is managing to get for now, but you can see the suspicion on yeah. fish like's position. He is so worried. He's like, what are they doing? Are they gonna try and nade me from below? We don't have Wreck roaming downstairs anymore because as you said, he's trying to support fish like. So that does mean that Scar's extra vulnerable to below. And they would have heard this hatch being opened up as well by Ace Roller on the buck. They're actually so away. That was really good from Fish, like, realizing, hang on a moment, it's a little quiet here in CCTV. Oh, really nice pick as well. Oh, Double, no! in fact, from inside of the break room as Fav tried to make that entry. This is the first time that we've seen Fav not get CCTV control successfully. Fish, like, for a third as well through the vertical with a slitter of HP, will not let go. That is a perfect read from Fish, like, and he's danced around it to perfection. Three kills thus far, but there's two more waiting to clear him. As you said, low HP, but it may be that he has done enough. Candy's going to try and make his way up the stairs. Fish likes actually drop below. Is eventually taken down. The damage, however, is well and truly dealt. And for Fav, this will be massive challenge. Try and push into two mirror windows, one holding each of the sights. Window position actually a bit awkward now. Washoi getting aggressive, dealing a bit of damage. He is, of course, playing the Wamai, can support himself. This player in 90 now, Afro, Diffuser in pocket. Of course, walking into that goo mine. No choice but to pick that up. The damage is too much to bear. A nade to go through, but the swing from Metal, and he is dead. It's all up to Candy now. First two kills in the round, but the third one, fortunately, will not happen. A great adaptation for Scars, and they finally have an adequate reply to what Fav were cooking up. Yeah, that was that was a really good adaptation, like you said, to actually double down on that CCTV hold, but it was really fish like that. But I think truly made some great decisions on the micro with his positioning, right? Like he had this inkling that CCTV is real quiet, guys. Like something is going on down below. And he, he goes around, he checks main stairs. That's how you know that that the game sense on these players is really starting to be elevated here in this round. Wreck as well going over to that mezzanine position to support him meant that fish like felt a lot safer from that break room entry. And as a result, for once, the fab formula has actually been broken. 
really good stuff from Scars, but of course that's the only tactical timeout they get, so they really need to capitalize on this lead in the momentum that they've just achieved for themselves and managed to convert that to these other bomb sites because that's the concern right man you they, they already won armory in fact they've won it twice now but it's these two other bomb sites that were so dominantly in favor of fav well i think the thing with fav is like yes they they won the last two bomb sites but like how do they do it and it's like in the exact same method that they've won literally every other bomb site and that's like they cc tv control and then get top floor control and then like that's kind of it right it's like for scars that's like the one thing that they have to fight and they have to worry about at the moment to actually break the plan of fav and i think when that doesn't work i'm not sure what fav will respond with the observer just highlighted a really cheeky thorn trap as well on that balcony as soon as that detonates then the player will likely the attacker player will have to likely sprint away and the defender will know that that's his cue to run out and find what will likely be a free kill Really like that. We've also got a bit of attempting engagement early on down in detention and run out for just a brief moment as well. Scars are trying to really put the pressure on Fav and get in their face. You can tell that Fish like has played this position like thousands of times. Like he has so many iterations of like how to run out on this balcony, right? You've got Thorn, you had the Legion, you had uh, you know Malusi as well. It's just he knows exactly what's going on. Not just that, but he's supported by Pion this time around. Light has just taken a lot of damage as well, trying to make this entry work for himself. And keep in mind, he's one with the diffuse and the hard reach, so he might be a little necessary later in the round. Reloading. Ever a bit stalled out here. Not sure what their plan is to clear fish like they don't have the horizontal pressure really they don't have the vertical player that they did last time right like they use the block to try and put pressure on from below and i think fish likes maybe realizing he might have even done enough damage so far acer roller finally begins the exchange he stairs control was paramount for the defense and it has been stolen away now acer roller moving in from the mezzanine is about to put some pressure on fish like it's gone down and will likely be on that 90 camera unless it has already been taken out. This is the chance for Fav to get into this. Washaway is holding the window jump in from below, so Fishlike doesn't have as much to worry about, but he was ever so cautious about that 90 position. He takes down Acerola. Washaway gets the player on the jump in, and another for Fishlike. It's fallen to pieces once again for Fav. After a great start, they will look to salvage it. Nice impact there. Does a lot of damage onto Candy. 2v3, it's not unachievable here for Fav. It's a bit rough though. There's about 45 seconds left. Oh, they've actually got info on one of the players. So Rafo could isolate this 1v1 here if he times it well. He's got flashbangs as well to aid his push. So this is certainly in the realm of possibility. Ooh, would have heard the drop. And the Legion oh, wins the fight. How unfortunate. And that's all but confirms this round as well. Andy Diffuser, but... Uh, Crossfire, spotted on camera. So many angles open. Tempted flicking, but uh, all three of the Scars players smell blood in the water and they will peek together one by one. And that's uh, a great response now. After two rounds in a row from Fav, we've seen two in a row from Scars and they move on to their tertiary bombsite. Yeah, Scars have it figured out. Like, honestly, the, the only thing that they had to figure out in that tactical timeout was how do we stop them from getting inside of CCTV and break room? And, and that was about it, right? Like, uh, now that they have this formula figured out, it seems like it's really challenging now for Fav to actually find that adaptability to go for something else and find another new point of entry and a new weakness inside of the map. I, I'm starting to doubt whether they actually have that adaptability in them. If they might have come into this game on a six map border lust streak against uh, Scars at 7 0 Fnatic on this map. They came in prepared though. Unfortunately, preparation only gets you so far because, as you said, as soon as Scars start to change something, then the onus is on Fav to respond. They haven't been able to come up with a response as of yet. This is actually kind of nuts from Scars as well. Like, they're not only doubling down on that CCTV hold, but now they have like a full strat around it, right? They're actually going to use Break Room as that power position. We saw in the free cam uh, of the Aruni player off Fish, like actually making a rotate from the hallway all the way inside of Break Room. So they're really going to try and hold on to this position for as long as they can. And they've set it up for it too. You know what's crazy, Mandy, is that there's actually only been one round so far this game that Scars have found the opening pick every single other time it's been Fav. And yet, 
when Fav do get the opening pick, a lot of the times, Scars are able to get a very swift refrag, sometimes two or three on the back of each other. And it's a testament to the individual prowess of Scars, but also just the, the chemistry and the micro, as you were describing last round from Fishlike. Fishlike has been one of the most valuable players for Scars in their recent matches. But, uh, well, Wreck was the guy that we hyped up, and he's already gone down early to Acerola, so yet another opening kill for Fav. Okay. At the moment that I said that, I was worried that Fav couldn't try something different. They actually are trying something different. They're not putting the pressure on CCTV early. They're actually going to go for a triple take instead. We can see a lot of those players convening themselves outside of that archive's position. But it's pretty dangerous to entry in through here. We, we're on board now with Tayo, who's got these really long lines of sight to deny that entry in through the triple wall. Also important to keep in mind, this is actually a customs bomb site. Customs and supply. Plays very differently to the other two. Very dangerous for the defense if they lose CCTV control. So that just puts even more pressure than we had previously on Scars to maintain CCTV. But as you said, Fav are looking to clear from elsewhere. But guess what? Scars are also roaming elsewhere with this extension, as you said. Tayo in archives. Washoi supporting from Fountain. Scars are so mobile. By attackers. So prepared is... for every entry point. Yeah, I was just about to say that they look so ready. Like, it looks like Fav just can't find, like, a single point where they can get in the building. Tyro is finally being able to take down in his position, but Washoi is just around the corner. Ooh. Surely there for the refrag? Apparently not. Fav have top floor control now. That was a pivotal moment there for Afro. I was going to say that Tyro has been fine on his roam. Finding one and getting traded back is fair enough. But the fact that we also lost Washoi for Scars, that's a mistake that... Pion and Fish, like, will have to wear for the remaining 50 seconds of this round. This is tough now for Scars. So the Diffuser is outside of CCTV. It does make me wonder how Fav are now going to translate this into Execute. It, it is still winnable here for Scars. That's all I'm saying. If they fumble the bag here, I wouldn't be too surprised. It is quite scary to then get into the bomb site after this. Scars are focusing on just staying alive as long as possible. Looking to contest every 1v1 they are given, including the vertical game. Fishlike has a perfect position, but he's spotted out. And he's caught by Acerola, who is on fire. Up to Pion now to clutch. First one down. Three more to go. But 10 seconds remain for Fab to get this done. There's so much information for Pion to make this flank work. As Light forces down that Diffuser, he's got information. Can he land the critical shots? Not in time to deny the plant. Now three gunfights will await him. There's one. A lot of damage taken by that grenade. There might be a chance to find some kills on the vert here. It looks like Light is highly aware of it and position spotted by the drone. John's in a world of pain now. This is very difficult. He doesn't know where he's got free. He can land this kill. This round is so clutchable, but Euro locks it in for Fav Gaming. They come away out of the half. Three rounds on their attack. That was a great translation into an execute there from Fav. I was a little worried about where they were actually going to send the bomb through after that, but the kill that they got onto Fishlike and then deciding to go in through Con into the bomb site instead was exactly what they needed there come the execute time, right? Fishlike was in such a good spot, but didn't quite win the gunfight he needed to cut that attack in half. And as a result, Fav actually translate that into yet another attacking win. Yeah, wow, it's funny, Mandy. I remember saying... In pre-show that uh, on map one I wouldn't be surprised if it's a 7-0, map two could even be a 7-3. I was predicting Fav might only win three rounds in this series and they've already won three rounds in the first half. While that is not the greatest ever, right, like we're talking about border, which can be, as you said, attacker sided, I think Fav should be very satisfied with that half, despite losing a couple of more than they would have liked after the back of that tactical timeout. There is more than enough chance here for Fav to take water away from Scars, which would be the largest upset that we have seen in Japan League for quite some time. Yeah, I think the way that Fav took that last round as well, like the fashion that they did it was, was really impressive as well. Like over, time and time again, they were only doing this one type of push and that was just clear CCTV and try and win the round, right? In that last round, they actually tried to change it up. They realized our formula has been broken. Let's try something new. And, and they went for that triple sided take into archives instead. And it, like it worked to a T. So honestly, all credit to Fav. They've done really well in this macro gameplay and the, the choices that they're making uh, through the early to mid round to actually win out these rounds. Indeed. 
Defense on border could be a real struggle though. Where they will sit down. has been droned at East Stairs, almost loses his life. Very lucky to survive that. For a kill here, 5k 1.5 is a nasty weapon for these pixel engagements. Quite a bit of an extension here from Fav, even Afro down below on the Legion. Of course, that Solus. Funny that we're not seeing a mirror picked at all. Somewhat of a surprise to me, considering how well it worked for Scars on this bomb site, but just a very different interpretation. Nice pick though for Light is the Solace currently sitting in 90 is going to deny the entry there from Wreck who was coming in through that break room door like mezzanine type of area so so far East Air's control hasn't been given away yet to Scars and that's really important for Fav to have that mobility through 90 and, and through mezzanine to make sure that they can hold on to that. Information now for Light. Such a different kind of hold. It's continually finding these ones. Our fab scars are looking very disjointed, very messy. Gone could salvage it with a kill here, but apparently not. I don't know what to say, man. This has been pretty disastrous for Fav. Sorry, for Scars. This opening round, the defense for Fav. Oh, we're about to see an engagement. Washoi is about to run into. I believe that's Light who dropped down below. Meanwhile, Tayo has jumped on CCTV as it is now free. But Washoi able to punish Light eventually on that clear downstairs, but it will be too late. Oh, that's a huge amount of damage onto Afro. Wow, that was a close one for the for Afro there. Washoi almost stealing his life away, but this is a really different type of attack that Scar's doing compared to Fav. Fav had like a very focused style attack, whereas Scar's, they, they just tried to take one side of the map. There we go. Euro's just been absolutely smashing this round. I think that's three in the round for him over on this East Test position, playing that rotate, isolating those one versus one. So he just did that to absolute perfection there for Fav. Yeah, like I was saying, Scar's have a very different attacking philosophy to Fav here, right? Fav? They isolated their attack. They focused their attack onto CCTV only. It was just a one room push. Whereas for Scars, what they were trying to do there was they had all five players try and enter through a different part of the map and take what part of the map that they could get. Now, unfortunately, in doing that, they had run into each of those Fav players holding on to one entry point by themselves. And the real pivotal player there was Euro, who was holding on to the primary entry point of Triple Wall and of East Stairs, right, with that rotation hole. So ultimately for Scars, not being able to claim a single part of the map control, I think it's just a real testament to how well uh, Fav played those one to one. Yeah, I definitely would say if you just got all these 10 players in a TDM, you would expect Scars to be the better Fragus, right? But Fav have really been holding their own this game. Euro in particular in the last couple of rounds. Acerola had some fantastic entries early, which is great because Acerola is the newest player to the roster. I also want to give a bit of a shout out to Light. He might have had a uh, might have a Mega KD at the moment, but had some good kills in that previous round playing the Solus. And Light is also uh, formerly the coach of this roster. In fact, according to Liquipedia, still oh, the coach yeah. of this roster. So I'm not actually sure whether Light is actually moving to the active roster and Shin has taken a backseat, or whether this is something more uh, temporary. But regardless, you always got to credit players that haven't been active in the playing roster, still being able to hang out with the best teams in their region and still win a lot of these fights. Yeah, absolutely. I think Fav are starting to figure it out here as well against Scars, like like we're, like we're seeing at the moment. Acerola seems pretty aware that there is going to be a Scars player putting that pressure out on the balcony. But he doesn't feel like the fear of being mobile here, right? Because he knows that it's not going to be all five Scars players out there. It's probably going to let one or two or something like that. So he can comfortably like go up to that window, peek his head in through the door, just just hold on to this position for now, um, because he knows that Scars have a very separated attack at the moment. Yeah, you really hit the nail on the head describing the way that Scars just have so many different ones. They're trying to contest everything. That, of course, splits your resources. Would love to see Scars just do a tsunami wave all players together and that's kind of what we're seeing here at the triple wall three players outside as the ace put a breach on which like is pressuring from the office window as well this is not an easy way to clear office right like the defense is still quite favored in a lot of those engagements 
While Shoei's got pressure down below, he seems to be pretty aware that there is a play inside of Tellus. They're actually going to try and double down on this pressure as well, but the worry that they have is that Afro is on the other side, creating these one-way holes to try and deny that entry in uh, through Passport. There we go. Finally, Washoi is able to claim that fight onto Candy, but not before he's able to take down Wreck. And that is yet another round where Fav get the opening kill, despite there being a trade. That is seven out of eight rounds so far that Fav have got the opening pick, which is absolutely unreal always dominate this early game. Now, Yura has been locked out by that air jab. Would that lead to some complacency from Scars? Yura is still very much alive and able to go for a flank. It's actually double air jab, so not only can Yura not get through mezzanine, but he can't get back through the hallway either. Scars are going to start to translate this push down into the ground floor as they're able to drop into this bathroom hatch. The part they have to worry about now, though, is that there is still some vertical control for Fab. So as they try and translate it into the bomb site, they've got to be really careful of this retake. Highly necessary to clear all of Armory to get a plant down here on the box where Fish Like is right now. This plant must stick as the time is ticking away and Light is able to deny it on a long angle. Tayo fortunately able to take down Afro, but Light is the critical player and he is eventually taken down. Washoi now re-attempting the plant, but here comes Yura on for the flank in a one versus two, but he doesn't have the information on the player positions. As that plant goes down, it comes down to very confused scars. They've got the sound cue and fortunately not the shot for Tyo. It's a 1v1. As Washoi decides to make the smart move, go all the way upstairs. He was spotted on the cam though. He's made some vert to try and cover this diffuser. The C4 popped, but unfortunately misses for Yura. This will have to be landed for Washoi and he gets the narrow angle. That is scars once again tying up the scoreline, but in such a narrow fashion. That was really good for Scars. That was an excellently formulated push that they decided to do. It was one-sided. You just called it, right? Let's try a Tsunami Wave push. Do something different. And Scars show that they can change the pacing like that and open up that strap hook a little bit more. We saw them only take control of that triple wall. Then we were on board with Pion, who completely locked out the potential retake that Fav could have gone for there, right? Not only that, but he really held his ground on the top floor as the attempt for the retake came through too. So Scar's able to do what was a very linear push in the end with two perfection and thinking many steps ahead to prevent uh, the defenders from retaking and eventually winning out the round. It's pretty astonishing to me, Mandy, that Fav, of course, they've won four rounds, but there were two 1v1s that went Scars' way, and if you imagine those two 1v1s going Fab's way, then it would be a 6-2 scoreline. That's how tight this game has been. That's how great Fav has been. Unexpectedly so, which I'm just going to keep saying over and over because I'm pretty gobsmacked here that Fav has been so prominent on border, a map where I expected so little of them based on their history. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Like, Fev have really shown us that they know what's going on, I think. Like, they showed some adaptability in the end of their attack half. I think a little bit too late to show that, but they do show that, you know, they have some good macro understanding of this map. Not just that, but here on the defense, they're really holding on to their own as well. We saw in the first round, they were very proficient in that one-to-one -one hold. They were really good at identifying that Scars were going through many different points of entry and actually shutting that down. So, all credit to Fav. They're playing some good siege right now. Yeah. We will break ahead now. Fav have decided to go to Teller's archives for the first time. Teller's bathroom, I should say. Haven't seen that from them this game yet. Quite like this IQ pick. I wonder if that was because the pulse was spotted. Because really, there's not a lot of utility that can be seen by the IQ. It's really just the pulse and solace. But it's, uh, not always going to make a huge impact, let's be real. I think it's important for like isolating that one position and being able to take the 1v1s because once again, Scars have gone back to this uh, philosophy there where they want to attack all sides of the map. They want to probe the map before they make their way in. All five players are trying to enter in from a different part and if Rek can isolate where that pulse is and put the pressure on when that vertical comes through, it's going to prevent Candy from being able to toss up that C4 and, and kill his teammates. Quite quiet at the moment. It's Fav are trying to figure out where this push is coming from Scars, but once again, they're working together. Instead of poking individually, they are starting to bunch up together and focus on one thing at a time. 
has been very slow as a result, Mandy. Like, you've still got Euro holding 90. So much map control, so much mobility afforded to these defenders. Yeah, the danger here now is that they are starting to make their way in through the top floor, but there is still the info coming out below. Candy's just tossed out his C4, but it doesn't look like it connected, so Scars can now start to sweep through. What are they going to get for it? Unfortunately, the opening death, it seems. It's a massive massacre, though, upstairs. Yura might be able to salvage it. Oh, unfortunately, Washoi confirms that kill. I don't know what happened, Mandy. They exploded upstairs. And Fav completely fell to pieces. Candy's found one kill. But on that note, Scars have dropped into sight. The plant is going down. Candy almost denies the jump in, but doesn't land it in time. Now it will have to be an aggressive push. Tayo is not safe to plant, but Fishlike drops the hatch and immediately responds. Breaking ahead for Scars. Finally, a round in lead for Scars. That was like a measure three times, cut once kind of push there for Scars. <laughs> like, really, the, the idea in going for like a probe attack like that, what Scars are trying to do, right? Is that, yes, you start your players like all around the map and you probe all around the map, but you spend ages in that drone phase. You spend a long time looking on just your drones through the map and figuring out, talking to each other and going, okay, I think my thing is clearer than your thing. Let's all go here instead, right? And eventually Pion made the call, okay, after all that drone work, it sounds like the triple wall and walking in through break room or, or whatever they did through CCTV to sweep across the map is the right way to go. And I think a big part of that is like unpredictability against, against Fav, right? Fav are sitting there, they're wondering what on earth is going on because they haven't seen a single person all of a sudden, they turn their attention away, start getting a bit antsy, looking at other things, and, th and then you've got Scars walking in through the map as you've turned your face away from it, right? So I think yeah, ultimately, Scars holding on to that element of surprise to break in through that top floor was what they needed. Yeah, seriously, I, I don't know how anyone can predict Japan League. It's the nature of how all these teams play. It's it's a mind game. It's so much more of a mind game than other regions, don't you think? Defender, like, Scars yeah. will constantly be preparing for something. You're sitting there being like, what's going to happen? Where are they? What are they planning? And then before you know it, they explode with so much information and so much gusto, you're completely overwhelmed. I personally could not keep up with it last round, Manny. I'll be yeah, honest. No, I just right. saw the kills coming through. I knew that Scars were on the top floor. I had no idea what they had done to make that possible. And I think that that's what Fav have been talking about in that minute that they just took for their tactical timeout. What are Scars playing at? How are we going to adapt? And it looks very similar to what happened when Scars took their tactical timeout. They're bringing out the mirror. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, I think that instead, Fav have decided to consolidate their defense. What they've been doing on their defense has been pretty ambitious, right? Every single time, they've tried to extend out to as much of the map as possible. Like, you've got one player holding multiple points of entry, and that's really what has been denying Scars. But that time, Scars were a lot more cautious on their entry, and now Fav are deciding we really just can't keep track of all the different entry points and ways that Scars can get in the map. So let's give them the map but not give them the bomb site later on. And I think that's going to be the strength of the mirror here. I really rate mirror on board. Obviously a classic, one of the maps that popularized mirror when she first came out. And while she has fallen out of favor, particularly when she became the insta man, like we said, you can't insta ban her anymore. Too many good defenders to get rid of. Dami has taken the spotlight. Of course, you got to play around the mirror as well. We saw scars do so impeccably. But have a look at this. Light can get so much information on this scanner with the soulless and uh, unusually there's actually a lot more reinforcements on the 90 wall than I would typically expect and that allows him to just play safely in that position. Yeah it's not just that but it's supported by the castle setup that they have going on um, through that hallway as well. It's enabling light uh, to sit there for a long time and collect that info like you're saying and as a result it's quite telegraphed. Scars is push. They now know that Scars are putting pressure onto CCTV and they're going to send someone in below because he saw that drone go through as well, right? So that's for sure who we're on board with now who is going to eventually get that blow control but at least Fav know about it. You're right though. This is very much, much uh, pulled back Defense from Fav. What a nade from Fishlike. I'm not sure whether that was through the skyline. I believe it was onto yeah. that mirror position. That is a classic, a perfect one. It's second another player one. Has, yeah, second player has actually rotated into that position. However, the Selmers will breach and nullify that mirror's position. There's not a lot of choice now for Afro. He's got to play aggressive and got to try and force a frag. Unfortunately, he's never favored to win that fight. And Scars have a two-player lead. It's going to get further to a three-player lead. 
as Wreck has fallen as well. Candy and Acerola have to get aggressive. He's going to try here as Candy's were on board with him. Acerola as well with a long line of sight will be able to take down Wreck. Down on the ground now. Seemingly there is a player outside the triple wall, but he doesn't know that there's actually two oh, no. outside the radio window instead. Shield of the Ossa is going to protect Pion with his life for a few more seconds. But here goes Acerola. Oh, that was far too close. And Pion, unfortunately, a single stray bullet takes down Tayo. Now Candy, after finishing off Washoi, this is a one versus two. He has a C4. It was ripped. And that forces the Osa back. Candy, though, hasn't overextended as of yet. He's playing this extremely well for the run out here. Can't get detected. That would expose his position. Now you can see Fishlike is watching for that C4. Candy throws it out. Is it shot out of the air? No. But neither does it take down the Diffuser to Planter. Now the choice is for Candy to clutch up or go down. Pion has to go for kill and Candy reads it perfectly. Fav Gaming once again. This is unbelievable. They're just next level. This is not the Fav we know. This is the Fav that we love. That was an incredible clutch there from Candy. That was so outsmarted of Scars. Like, that is such an incredible way to play that positioning. He throws the C4 out initially, but he realizes that Pion has actually gotten off the plant, right? And so he doesn't waste that utility and instead wastes even more time. Pion then has to reattempt. Then Candy wins the critical one versus one he needs onto that archive's balcony. He lets the time go away as well. He doesn't get hasty on that pick. He waits for Pion to be forced to go for that plant and then goes for that final pick. It's just every single step of the way in that clutch, Candy made the right decision to be able to close that one out. So that's an incredible round to take away from Fab. Wow, what a what a round to really just shunt uh, Scar's back onto their, their haunches. This is... I'm in disbelief. I'm finding difficulty putting words to it, Mandy. I thought this would be a 7 0 7 1 7 2 in favor of Scars, but now Fav have actually tied up the scoreline at five rounds apiece. And I'm going to be honest, Fav have looked like the better team. They've got the opening picks far more frequently than Scars have. They've made some great adaptations. And, uh, well, now it's a, t a tactical timeout. It's just finished up for Fav on the back of that clutch. Your bombs from being they have the opportunity attackers. to take match point on their defense. I really hope that I don't have to eat a hat. That would kind of suck. <laughs> I know that Rob is going to hold me to it as well because it's Rob. Yeah, he, so, he will. Is it yeah. Is it if uh, Fav win this map or win this series? No, no, the series. The okay, series. okay. I was going to say, so, you got... What, no, what, I what could be in would, trouble. What kind of hat are you looking at eating? Because... Uh, I mean, like, a, a small hat, right? A small... Like, what... Like, you know, I'm not eating, like, a big, like, cowboy hat. I'm eating, like, a hat <laughs> or something. Like a yarmulke or something? You know, those, uh, <laughs> yeah. those tiny little hats? <laughs> yeah, one of those. Bite. One that I can just have in one bite. That's not bad. Anyway, sorry. I digress. I'm thinking about the, my yeah, own punishment in this game, but Scars could be in a bit of trouble here. Like, they're doing the right things. Not just that, but this is a really peculiar setup that they've got going as well. Like, what is going on inside of Office there with that shield, right? Like, there are some ideas being thrown out here if you're fab. Well, oh, ideas have worked out wonders for them. That aggression in the mid round, the refragging, the continual pressure that has been the star of the show for Fav on this defense. Candy is definitely the most popular player in the server right now. First to break 10 kills, of course, to do it in a 1v2 clutch. Oh, but of course, the early pick from Yura. It's a pivotal one. Washoi goes down. There is a good trade, though, from Rek, who's finally woken up in this game. Mm, office is the danger zone. There's a lot going on here. This wall is reinforced as well, so uh, the player standing behind it is going to be safe for the world. I think that's Candy, actually. Not just that, but he's got his own little uh, dread mines as well to deny the entry in through the double and in through the radio window as well. So he's in pretty, he's in a pretty good spot, right? Like, it's going to be very challenging to clear his way out here. Not just that, but he's a fall off route back down uh, to Afro, who's in the floor below him too. So they're going to hold on to this for a little while. This is an awkward position for Candy. Oh, the drone baits perfectly. Wreck is able to refrag that drone's position. Getting the numbers advantage for Scars. Forcing his defenders back into the site. Acerola was tempted to go for an aggressive play 90, but falls back. However, have a look at Afro's position. Downstairs on that Solus, ready to deny planet in the late round. 
I am very surprised that Rec was able to walk in there and take down the player behind the single wall like that. That is some bravery there from the players of Scars. Like you said, the drone to bait out that pick was perfect from them. But like you're saying, Afro is down below, right? So if Scars do want to translate their push down into the ground floor, they have to be very careful because the Solace is going to know exactly what their plan is. Numbers advantage is still in favor of Scars, however. Oh, player goes deep. You can't be feeding those kills to light. Tayo, that is a massive damage and wreck as well. Oh, the 3k! Light is unbelievable! The trade finally comes through, but Pion has been tasked with not an enviable position at all. Attackers recovered the bomb. And now 1v2. It's not looking good. It's not looking good, absolutely no. not. Acer Roller and Afro have the advantage. Afro is so far afield. The fuser has been regained from Pion. This is not an easy position to try and clutch. 25 seconds. Acerola. Harry Potter is playing patiently. Look at this from Afro. He can retake the top floor completely. This plant will have to be forced down. But I tell you what, there is not enough time for it to happen. Here comes Afro. Death from above. And Fav Gaming, with the back of that, will find the map point on their opponent's map pick. That was incredible work from Light. You were saying earlier, this guy is supposed to be the coach of this team, but here he is in the server doing God's work. They're having his impact frags through the top floor. Scars, they wanted to go for that sweep through the top floor. They actually wanted full control of that. They chased down the kill, but the one-to-one -one isolated gunfights that Light was able to get completely sealed the deal of that round for Fav as they claim match point. Wow, Mandy, this is the plot twist that none of us expected. Even the coin flip predicted that Scars would win. We were fully unified, the three of us on the desk and Lady Luck herself all backed in Scars. This is uh, not, this is, this is not it. This is, this is not the, the script. I swear I proofread the script before we started today and this was not in it. Did you? Because I think the hat eating eventualities is really, you know, it's it's starting to happen. You've I don't done know yourself to dirty, you. Mandy. I've actually done myself in by saying that. I definitely should not have said that on the desk. If I'm doing that again, that was dangerous. Oh, Fav. But I'm, Fav I'm, look, yeah. I'm loving this new look, Fav. This is a, a Fav that we have not seen before, at least not for a very long time. There was a point in history where this team was capable of being top four in Japan, top four in APAC North at the time. Yet it has been a long time since then. Now, finally back and rising. If they win this game, if they beat Scars, the reigning Japan champions, they will go into a match to fight for the major spot. Of course, they will start with a bang once again. Acerola, a devilish spawn peak, viciously ripping Wreck out of this round and putting Fav in the advantage while on that point. Yeah, and that's like a taking down a super player as well. Rack has been pretty good here on this attack so far. He's been excellent at um, teaming up with one of his uh, teammates to play that early round to perfection. But taking him down is pretty dangerous. Not just that, but with the gun on the Monty as well, that's essentially one less gun that you have in the hands of Scars, right? So they're really down in the firepower at the moment, are Scars. I imagine, I, I can't imagine what they're going to be able to do from here. It does seem like they have some info on the setup that's gone on inside of Mezzanine, but that grenade won't sink. Well, Scars, there's no doubt about it. The onus is on them to make some moves here, and there's still quite a persistent drone. That's a great drone upstairs on the roof, looking down over the gaping hole. Of course, Yura being a Solus is not going to fall for that cheap trick. This is really scary for Scars. This, this is match point here at the moment, right? They have to be extremely careful and cautious making their way in. So they have identified that the point of weakness is inside of Customs. That is what has been given up to them at the moment, and Pion is going to take Monty and the Diffuser through there. What Scars have got to worry about now is that there is still vertical pressure for the defenders. So they can't really feasibly get open control. Was Mezzanine is there, but there it is. That that was the medicine that they needed. Was Shui entering in through break, takes away that Mezzanine pressure, and now Pion can start to make his way in through open. Door has been left ajar. And Scars come knocking. Acerola has gone down. They will not sit down without forcing overtime. Pion to gather information on the Monty. Light's position must be identified. Candy has managed to go for the rotate. I don't believe he was detected in time. This flank could mean the game. The sledge on the other side has no idea, but a quick flick from Fishlike. 
might slip us into OT. Afro, position reveal, dropping down into waiting. Into the three-way crossfire. Scars will push us into overtime on the back of fish like heroics. And Mandy, we will not be done yet. This game, this marathon will continue. And that is the prowess of the Scars problem solving, right? That was such a well-identified point of weakness in the defense from them. Even though they lost that initial pick of Wreck, they realized that there's a massive weak point inside of Customs. Not just that, but they think ahead as well. They go, okay, this is Customs control. We want that. But when we get there, then what are Fav going to do? Fav, they're going to want Mezzanine control back, right? Because that's going to give them the vertical pressure they need to prevent Scars from executing. And so what do they do? Then they send in a play or go and crack the guy that's there. I think that was what's showing on the Ash to go and take out that player that was in Mezzanine. Not just that, but then the retake that came through from Acerola in the exact same position was shut down in the exact same way. So Scars, even though they come up with a plan, they don't get hasty about it. They, they come up with a plan and the steps that follow after it as well. And as a result, they can convert that round from what was a really tough spot to a great win. I think the Monty was a great pick as well for Pion. They're just slowing down and consolidating, like you're saying. Yeah. Not getting over uh, excited in the advantage, but speaking about excitement, have a look yeah, at was, the lineup. I was just thinking that, what is stars. happening? I've got a terrible feeling about this round. An Blaz, awful feeling. Amaru, Grim, Osa, and Nomad. You know exactly what they're going to do. This is an archives rush through mm -hmm. and through. My question remains, where is Washoi going to Amaru, and where will Candy on the Warden be playing? Because Candy would yeah. single-handedly destroy this push for Scars. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like we were saying earlier, Warden is that necessary operator here on the defense or like one of the Avengers, as we like to call him, right? Because he, he's not like that strat breaking operator, right? This is the type of attack that you want Warden for. Here goes Yura, peeking out onto that mezzanine window, knowing that there's a player on the outside, but hang on, Dev, what's was in down below? What's going on here? Very strange place to Amaru into the Teller's window, but he has done so. Position was revealed. There was a player in workshop sending some bullets his way. The key thing here is that Scars have not shown that they have the Glaz. And now they finally have, but immediately make a push on the back of it. Wreck to flood the site with bees and cover off all these positions. Candy is the one player to stop this from working, and he is in the perfect position to do so. Yon has to win this fight as the plant begins to go down, but the repel in from Wreck. Oh, it's stolen the show for Scars. Down below, Washoi to find another kill. And it all relies on Afro in the clutch. A 1v5 becomes a 1v4. But this task is simply too much to overcome for Afro. Two players in the crossfire. Wreck peaks maybe a little bit too much. And Impact would almost trade himself back, but Wreck puts the nail in the coffin. And that is Scars going to match point for the first time on border. That was such a cool attack from Scars. I have to absolutely commend them. You were saying in the prep phase, right? The thing that Scars got to worry about is where is that warden going to be? It is the one thing that could have put a thorn in the side of that attack. But they dealt with it perfectly with timing, right? As that execute came through, someone repelled in to backstab that warden in through Sandwich. And that's exactly what Scars needed to do. That was the turning point that made that attack successful. And what a crazy way to change the pace as well for Scars, right? Time and time again, we've seen them on the attack play it incredibly slow, right? They sit outside the building for a full minute, droning, wondering what's going on, then making a plan, then going for it. That time, they had a plan, and they did it within about a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, utterly insane strat call from Scars, and perfect delivery, perfect follow three, particularly from Wreck on the Grim, the MVP of that round, hands down. Guess what, Mandy? That is the first time in this map that Armory Lockers and Archives has been successfully attacked. And now the dare is set before Fav. Now they have to do the same thing. If they are unable to do so, then all of this effort, all of these rounds, all of these opening kills, all the clutches has been for naught. We'll move on to map two. Fav will continue their losing streak on border. I am very nervous here for Fav. Remember on their attacking half, they essentially did five of the same style of attack and then one different attack that was successful, right? So I'm wondering what Fav are going to go for here. Are they going to revert back to their original plan 
and just and just go for a CCTV take because that would spell a bit of danger for me, right? Once again, we have Wreck actually supporting Fish Like this time around. Fish Like is great in his spot, and Tayo as well has got the mirror window to face out onto the balcony. So I am nervous for uh, nervous for Fav. Extremely nervous for Fav. The mirror in tow and the support Fish Like playing this prized position CCTV. Fav have a massive job of dealing with this position of flooding out these defenders. Rex supporting as well. Last time he was the linchpin of this site. Taking a lot of damage. Now to get that kill onto the player outside yet. He's repositioning some of his FNAT devices and falling back. Oh, that's actually kind of crazy, right? Like, he's microing them so well that he's actually deactivating them as he's pulling back. The main thing here is to, to prevent, like, them from being able to shoot it out, right? Or anything like that. Because once it's activated, it does give them a little bit of a hole to make their way in and then get out quickly, right? To try and deactivate it. So this is great from Rec on his fall off as he supports Fishlight. And Yura's going to try and get some information, but really that was fairly effortless. A lot was gleaned. At least the Thorn Trap was spotted. Rex actually been taken down. Oh no, baited into a second kill. This could be the door opening for Fav. Fish like though holds on to his prized position inside CCTV. Looks for a second on that run out. Fav must flush him down. The candy cannot land the shots. Yura takes a hell of a lot of damage to that Razor Bloom. Tyo's looking for an overextension as well. Another Razor Bloom to detonate. Scars, they've got this before them. They have the chance to lock in the win. And Tyo's doubled down. Two players remain for Fav Gaming to push to a 15th round. But Scars are not looking to let it happen. Fish goes down. And Yura has saved it once again. Tyo in a one versus two. That's a good flashbang, but not quite good enough. He must now reposition as he hears two players coming in. The low HP Yura dealt with swiftly in the 1v1. It's up to Afro to clutch up for his team, for Fav Gaming, to make it worth it at the end of this marathon of a match. Afro to flash once again through. His teammate now picked up. Will go for that plant. And Tayo can hear it. A C4 to go over the top. Does it land? Yes, it does. The plan has been denied, and Afro is left far, far away. Scars, after a heartbreaking start, they redeem themselves. They continue their streak on border, and they take us to map two with their head held high. That was an incredible win.